Hey, what's up everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another Juice tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to talk about the process block or what some people call the audio loop or the audio callback. And this is the main guts of any sort of audio app or plugin where you have audio information coming into and going out of your plugin. If you're doing any sort of signal processing or digital signal processing, this would be happening here in the process block where you'd be making some sort of calculations in real time uh, on your incoming audio, make some sort of change, and then you would have resulting audio that would be going out of your plugin. So I'm going to do this tutorial to try to clear up any sort of uh, misconceptions that people have about the process block. So I know that through my time and my journey in audio development, I've had many misconceptions about the process block myself. And I see this as a common question that people ask in the development community. And I hope that I could clear up some of these misconceptions. And if you have any sort of information that you'd like to add about the process block or any sort of corrections that you'd like to make, I invite you to do so in the comments below. So without further delay, let's go ahead and get started. So we see that we have two arguments for our process block. We have references to our audio buffer, and our audio buffer is what actually contains our audio information as a set or a vector of floats. Then we have this MIDI buffer, which is the same thing, but it contains MIDI messages. If we had some sort of MIDI controller connected, it would contain the MIDI messages of when we're pressing a pad, when we're moving a slider on a MIDI controller, and so on. We're not really going to talk too much about the MIDI buffer itself. We're going to concern ourselves mainly with the audio buffer. So going to line 137, we have this line that says scope node to normals. I'm going to give you my best general explanation of what this is as I understand it. So my understanding is that when your CPU tries to do calculations on very, very small numbers, and I say very, very small in terms of if you had, uh, let's say, a decimal and 15 zeros and then some numbers, uh, and it was trying to do calculations on this, my understanding is that your CPU load actually spikes when it's trying to do calculations on those very, very small numbers. And this node to normals is to prevent that from happening. Uh, and that it zeroes out or rounds those digits. I'm not sure exactly how it happens. Uh, I've, I've looked in, a little bit into this and it got very deep very quickly. And I just said, okay, well, I have a general understanding of that. Okay, so, uh, so the node to normals object is there to prevent your CPU load from spiking when it's trying to do calculations on very, very small numbers. Then in lines 138 and 139, we just have these local variables that are being created that uh, give us a total number of input and output channels for our sound card. And then a common misconception that I see from people is line 142 where it says buffer dot clear, and it goes from zero to buffer get number samples. Now, a lot of people say, how is audio information actually happening in this process block if we're actually clearing it out before anything is happening? Well, if we take a closer look at line 141, what we can see is that I is total number of input channels. So I'm operating in a stereo scenario here. So let's say that my total number of input channels is two, and let's say that my total number of output channels is two as well. And if we take a closer look here, we could say, okay, I is two, two is not less than two. So this line of code would never actually run in my scenario. And in most scenarios, that would be the case. Okay, so the buffer.clear is only happening in scenarios where you'd have more output channels than input channels. And it would clear those other output channels out because we wouldn't be using those. And so it's just clearing those extra channels out if we have more output channels than input channels. Going down further to 144 through 147, we see that we're iterating through channels. So once again, our total number of input channels in this scenario is two. So we have uh, channel, so this would be iterating through channel zero and then channel one. And then 
Another object of confusion or another subject of confusion is line 146. We have this audio pointer channel data equals buffer get right pointer for the channel. So what is a right pointer? A right pointer is a pointer that actually lets us modify our audio information. So if we were doing some sort of DSP algorithm, let's say we were doing filtering or we were doing some sort of gain plugin or something like that, what would happen is that we're actually getting access to that audio value that's in our vector, in our buffer, and we're actually able to change that somehow. Okay, so that's what that channel data is. So we also have available to us what's called a read pointer, and we see this as well commonly in the process block. So let's just say read, uh, let's, let's say, read pointer equals buffer dot get read pointer and we have channel okay we see that this is const right const means we can't change it and of course it's a read pointer which means that we're just reading it so why would we want to know uh information about our audio buffer if we weren't trying to change it. Okay, so one scenario where we might use a read pointer might be if we were outputting uh, the level meters out to our UI, right? We would want to know, we, we would want to be able to read our audio information, so we would want to put that out to our UI, right? But we don't actually need to make any sort of changes in the audio information it itself in that scenario. So that's why you have a read pointer and that prevents the uh, changes from actually happening to your buffer as you're trying to uh, just get a reading on that and put it out to your, uh, to your UI side to repaint your meters. Okay, but then we have this write pointer, channel data write pointer. And let's say that we're trying to do some sort of audio processing, right? So there are two kind of scenarios that I see or that I've seen in my experience when it comes to audio processing. One scenario is where it's trying to do processing on a buffer load of information at once, right? So one way that we could depict this is let's say we had a filter and we were trying to do processing on the audio information and what we could do is we could do a we could do it on a whole buffer at once by doing channel data and then normally it would say buffer get num samples okay so if we had if we had something like this right where we're trying to process and what this is doing is that it's getting a buffer load. Let's say that our buffer size is 512. Let's say it, it would be getting 512 samples at a time and then perform this filtering process on the, on the audio buffer itself, okay? It would be doing that all at once, okay? And normally if you click into the process if you had like some sort of process method that was happening here, normally if you tried to cl click into that, you would see that there is actually a for loop that goes from zero to buffer, get num samples, that, and then it says, you know, filter dot process on, on, those, uh, on those samples. So the other option is if you have, if you're doing this on a sample by sample basis, right? So in that case, you would say for auto, sample equals zero sample is less than buffer get num samples plus plus sample All right now you have a scenario where you're able to do some sort of processing here so typically this type of process would look something like this channel data at sample position equals and then you would have I don't know let's say channel data then let's say you were you were doing a gain times gain factor 
So here we see that we're doing this now on a sample by sample basis where you're taking one sample and then you're multiplying it by a gain factor. Let's just say it's 0 0.5, right? So let's say this gain factor is 0 0.5. Then any sample that you have in this buffer would be cut by half, right? So it'd be ha half the amplitude of what it was before. So this is, so these are the two ways that this processing happens, right? So this filter, this filter dot process would normally have a loop like this, that's in this, that's baked into this process method, right? Or sometimes you have to do it sample by sample like that. Okay. So those are the two types of processing that I've seen. So going back to the process block, uh, one misconception that I know that I've had in the past is uh, I've always thought to myself, well, I've heard that the process block is a high priority thread, so it's getting called very, very quickly. Uh, and the question that I've had in my mind is, well, how quickly does that process block get called? How often does it get called? And I used to think in my mind for some reason, well, the process block must get called at sample rate, uh, sample rate times per second, right? Uh, so here I have a text editor and it says, how many times a second does the process block call? So if we look at our buffer, let's, let's say that we have a sample rate. Let's, let's picture a scenario here where we have a sample rate of let's just say 44,100. So the app has to process 44,100 values or samples a second, right? Then we have a, this, this uh, variable that we call buffer size, right? Let's just say it's 512, right? So normally it's a power of two. 128, 256, 512. Sometimes it's not though, okay? But most of the times it is. Uh, so that's referring to this buffer, get number of samples, how many samples we have in our vector that we can process at one time. So then the question is, how many times a second does this process block call? So we see just by some simple math here, we have to calculate 44,100 values a second which is our sample rate, and that each time that we call through this block, we're processing buffer size samples, which in this scenario is 512, right? So we see that the audio callback actually happens sample rate divided by buffer size times a second. Okay, so that's, so there are actually um, exceptions to how this happens. So we're assuming in this in this scenario that this 512 is stays constant and then this is just what happens every callback. But DAWs actually handle this differently depending on the DAW. Okay, so there are some that will just uh, change the rate on you, right? So maybe your buffer size might be 512 for a bit but then it might be 128. And then sometimes it's not even actually powers of two. It's something like 46 or something like that. Okay, so, uh, but you don't really have to worry about that as long as you just have this processing right and that you're just doing the processing on whatever is coming into your process block, you'll be fine, okay? But that is that is just kind of a, very generalized answer for you of uh, when when you're thinking about how many times does this process block actually call. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about some things that you do not want to do in the process block. So the process block runs on a thread called the audio thread, and the thread is a high priority thread. And the reason that this high priority is because we wanna make sure that the audio information is always coming through. And here are just a few basic things that you don't wanna do in your audio thread. There are, there are loads of discussions that you see about this in the Juice Forum and also on the Audio Programmer Discord about things that are blocking or things that you don't wanna do in the audio thread. So there are whole reams of discussions about this. I'm just gonna give you 
kind of two things that you don't want to do in your audio thread. So the first one would be something like this. You don't want to console out. So like, let's say that we were innocently trying to find out what the values of our actual audio were in, uh, in our process block, right? That's something that we don't want to do. Okay, and what you'll find is that if you run this, that if you had incoming audio, you'll get some sort of stuttering or buffer underruns. Uh, basically, the audio wouldn't sound right uh, because you're trying to console out. And this console, this consoling out actually blocks on your audio thread. Okay, that's what they call it. They call it blocking. Okay, and that you don't want to block on your audio thread. So that, that's cool if you just want to kind of experiment and just see like, hey, are those are those samples looking like they might be right? Uh, then uh, that's cool to do. But as soon as you do it, you just want to uh, actually get rid of that method. Okay, make sure that you don't have that in your process block. So no consoling out on the process block. The other thing is you don't want to allocate memory on the audio thread. Okay, so let's say we had a vector and that we were doing some sort of vector resize method. Okay, and uh, you know, we wanted to do, we wanted to make it 512 values or something like that. Okay, once again, this method call or any sort of memory allocation, we don't know how long that's going to take. Okay, so we do not want to call anything like vector resizing on the audio thread. No memory allocation, no vector resizing on the audio thread, and no consoling out on the audio thread. Okay, so that is a very generalized overview of the process block. So, so yeah, so here's some, those are some basics of the audio callback, and I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got some knowledge out of it. And as I said, as always, feel free to add comments below if you have things that you want to add. Uh, and I will see you next time.